come, whatever the other thing is. Yes. Improvise. There we are, I see us. Yes. I'm gonna share it. Excellent. And I will share us to the Kingdom page as well. All right. Thank you, Sarai. So we are live and welcome to the last virtual Midrealm Bardic Showcase. Um, well, maybe it won't be the last one, but it's the last one in this series. We started way back in May of 2020. And I am pleased to say everyone who is performing tonight has performed previously. Um, and I just want to say a huge uh, thank you to all of our performers for giving up their time and their talents so that we at home can have some entertainment and they can spread joy, which brings me to the theme of this month's showcase, which is joy. I ask them to please give me whatever piece brings them joy. So I am very excited to get started. So our first performer is Leah Dunn. Leah Dunn, if you will, please unmute yourself and take it away. So I love to cook. Uh, that gives me great joy. And I've cooked for large groups before I joined the SCA. After I joined the SCA, my dream was to cook the penultimate Irish feast. And I was given that privilege in the summer of 2018 uh, for a simple day in the country. Anyone who's attended a simple day in the country knows that there is absolutely nothing simple about it. And this feast was no exception. It was five courses. Each course was matched to an Irish legend with a linked performance on a candlelit decorated feast hall stage. The drunken duck even provided matched pairings of wines and cordials. And at the end of the meal, our whole crew was called up before the king and the queen. He, he gave me this lovely ring and announced it was the best feast he'd ever had. Then the king said he was going to the kitchen and who would follow him while he cleaned up, which totally blew my mind. <laughs> But it was my dream feast of all dream feasts, and I couldn't have even accomplished any bit of it without the help of a small army of people who gave me great joy. And so I took Ken and Lisa Theriot's song, A Band of Brothers, which is based around the Henry V speech at Agincourt, yeah, 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 and I recast it for these marvelous people who gave me so much joy. If we can cook a day this feast that's fit for queen and king, and if it satisfies their taste, our kitchen's fame they'll sing. A call went out for volunteers to bake and roast and pair. Many crew from far and near lent time and work and care. We feast, we staff of feast chefs, for if you slice and dice with me, you are my sous chefs. And mid-realm feasters missing this Shall feel a curse they were not here To eat our fare upon the simple day Proclaim it now throughout this land To bear no false pretense If you've no stomach cooking food Depart and get you hence The price of feasting some shall buy For portions generous We will not bear their company Who deign to dine with us we staff a feast chefs, for if you slice and dice with me, you are my sous chefs. And mid-realm feasters missing this shall feel a curse, they were not here to eat our fare upon the simple day. The cooks who stand until dessert and end the meal at last shall on this story feast their friends and tell of glories past. They shall with pride display their burns and cuts, however deep. And any cook who was not here shall hold her palate cheap. We staff of sous chefs, for if you slice and dice with me, you are my sous chefs. 
and mid round feasters missing this shall feel a curse they were not here to eat our fare upon the simple day old chefs forget and each cook here may crumble and decay but we'll remember while we live what sauces spice this day so shall the great cook teach the young until the world is new and with our drunken ducky cups drink we few we happy few we staff of feast chefs for if you slice and dice with me you are my sous chefs and mid realm feasters missing this shall feel a curse they were not here to eat our fare upon the simple Chefs, for if you slice some nice with me, you are my sous chefs. And mid round feasters missing, this shall be the curse. They were not here to eat our fare upon the simple day. That was so delightful. Thank you so much for sharing. And I want to say that you have joined in. Have you joined in on every single one of these showcases? Yes, you have. You get a gold star for that. At least one gold star. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us. My Our God. next performer is Bredelwyn, which I believe also has performed every single one of these. Bredelwyn, if you would please take it away. Thank you. It's been very enjoyable doing all of these. Once there was a woodcutter. One day, while he was out cutting wood, he decided he wanted a special piece of wood to cut. So he went around picking up wood, looking at it, examining it from all angles. And if it didn't meet his approval, it was gone. And he kept on that day searching for a special piece of wood. What cutter? What is your purpose? The woodcutter heard a voice. Couldn't figure out where it came from. Woodcutter, what is your purpose? I'm looking for a piece of wood. Woodcutter, what is your purpose? I'm looking for a piece. I will wood 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 
What is your purpose? I want to carve it. What carve? What, what is your purpose? To carve a piece of wood. Woodcutter, what is your purpose? I want to make an, an, an animal. Woodcutter, what is your purpose? I want to carve an animal, just a nice small animal. Woodcutter, what is your purpose? I want to carve an animal for my child. Woodcutter, what is your purpose? And the woodcutter summoned his courage and said, I wish to bring joy to my child. Thank you, Brethren. I'm so glad that you have chosen to participate with us throughout this very strange year and a half that we've had. It and sure thank has you been. for always sharing with us. I can't wait to see you in person again. Yes. Our next performer is unable to make it, so he sent me a video, but he also has participated in almost every single one of these. Um, it is Tommaso, so I am going to share my screen and let his video take it away.
keep your aim true. Remember they fight with the same heart as you. Trust in their judgment. The ball that you throw, for they are a part of the honor and control. Bow to the crown, bow to the throne, and bow to the one who stood on you own. Remember their right, are watching the fray. So bow to each other and fight as you may. Bow to the crown, bow to the throne, and bow to the one. Whose favor you own, remember their eyes are watching the prey, and bow to each other and fight as you may. And bow to each other and fight as you may. Then bow to each other and fight as you may. <laughs> Yay! So that was Tommaso and um, I'm going to applaud even though he doesn't know, but I'm sure he's going to watch this video later. So I'm so glad that he was able to get a video to us because it would have been a shame for him to not participate on this last one. Our next performer is from my home barony, um, Ursula Mortimer, if you would please take it away. Hello, I'm Ursula and this is the piece that brings me joy. His name is Calvert. <laughs> And uh, we are going to sing a nativity carol, Personent Hodier. Mm -hmm. No, that's wrong. That's, note. Okay. Mm. Now we're going to sing it. Yes. Mm. One, two. Personent Hodier, Fortress Parerale, Laudantes, Yusunde. Qui nobis est datus, sumo deo datus, et de vir, 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 et de vir, 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 et de vir, dineo, ventre propriatus. In mundo nascitur, anis involvitur, presepe punitur, stabulo brutorum, recte supernorum, pedidi, di, di, pedidi, di, di, pedidi, spolia, princeps infernorum. Magistres venuron parvula miquirunt, Bethlehem mareon, stellulam sequendo, ipsum adorando, arum tus, 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 arum tus, 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 arum tus, et mirham e operendo. Omnes periculi, parece pureri, Cante tu tangeli, attenas in mundo, laudes tibi fundo, ideo, oh, oh, ideo, oh, oh, ideo, gloria, in excelsis deo. Bravo, wonderful. And actually, I'm going to say this is Calvert's first time performing with us. So welcome, Calvert. You. you picked Thank a good one much. to join us on. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And our next performer is Haroon, which I believe he needs no introduction. And um, I think Duchess Aenor is joining him. So take it away. Hello, greetings, Midrom. Um, so this theme is right. It's about joy. And one of the things that fills me with joy is playing music with Anor. I love it. I love it. We act, we kind of met circumstantially surrounding music. Um, and I didn't it just, know he was going to say that. It, I didn't know he was going to say that. Where, where, where are my lines? Because I'm going off script. <laughs> um, I, one might even say, like, I mean, she, and so she just picked up this drum and rolled with it. I mean, and one might even say that, um, I mean, she is musical. But again, one might say that Haroon waltzes into Anor's court and He's noodling on his oud and he's got a drum or two with him and she pushes the rest of the maids aside, strides through the room and says, give me that damn thing. And she sits down and plays. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> yeah, well, I like that story better. So she's amazing and I love, love, love playing with her. And I love that we play together and I love the musical journey that we get to be on and I love that it's casual and fun and awesome and it's fabulous. Uh, do you have anything to say? No. Really? No. <laughs> so this is a... Uh, medley of Middle Eastern 
tunes uh, that you may find, that you might hear around uh, a campfire at Penzik or somewhere. So if you're out there and you're listening, feel free to dance along or drum along or sing along. Because nobody's watching you anyway. So uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> Thank you. 
awesome. Thank you guys so much. I love the dynamic between you two. And I am just so grateful that you decided to join us. Looking, oh, see, I wish that had been on camera, but oh well, they kissed. Anyways, our next performer is Count Nikolai, who's going to tell us a very strange and interesting story, I'm sure. Take it away. So that is a tough act to follow, especially when your, your bardic ability is reading from a book. Um, at the beginning of this, uh, Dame Honor mentioned that the theme of the showcase was joy, um, but I feel I should share that when she approached me to read another Russian fairy tale, uh, what she had asked is if she could, if, if I could find something that was, and I'm quoting, utterly ridiculous. Fortunately, most Russian fairy tales are utterly ridiculous, and it brings great joy for me to share them with you. So I have two. They're both short, um, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. The first is called The Goldfish. <clears throat> Near the shore of an island in the ocean stood a small dilapidated hut. In this hut lived an old man and his wife. They lived in dire poverty. The old man made himself a net and began to catch fish in the sea, for this was his only means of livelihood. One day the old man cast his net and began to pull it in. It seemed to him heavier than it had ever been before. He could barely drag it out. He looked, and the net was empty. There was only one fish in it. It was not an ordinary fish, but a goldfish. The goldfish implored him in a human voice, do not take me, old man. Let me go back into the blue sea. I will return your kindness by doing whatever you wish. The old man thought and thought again and said, I do not want anything of you. Go back to the sea. He threw the goldfish into the water and returned home. His wife asked him, did you get a big catch, old man? Only one little goldfish, the old man replied, and even that I threw back into the sea. It implored me so earnestly, saying, let me go back to the blue sea and I will return your kindness by doing whatever you wish. I took pity on the little fish. I did not demand anything of it, but to let it go free for nothing. Ah, you old devil, said his wife. You had a great chance, but did not know how to take advantage of it. The old woman became so full of spite, she abused her husband from dawn to dusk and did not give him a minute's rest. At least you should have asked for some bread. Soon we won't have even a crust. What will you eat then? The old man could not bear it any longer and went to the goldfish to ask for bread. He came to the sea and cried in a loud voice, goldfish, goldfish, stand with your tail to the sea and your head to me. The goldfish came to the shore. What do you want, old man? He asked. My wife is furious with me. She sent me to you to get some bread. Go home and you will find plenty of bread. The old man returned. Well, wife, do we have plenty of bread? He asked her. We have plenty of bread, but we have trouble. Our trough broke. I have nothing to do my washing in. Go to the goldfish and ask him to give us a new trough. The old man went to the sea and said, goldfish, goldfish, stand with your tail to the sea and your head to me. The goldfish came saying, what do you want, old man? My wife sent me to ask you for a new trough. Very well, you will have a new trough. The old man returned, and as soon as he crossed the threshold, his wife again beset him. Go to the goldfish, she said, and ask him to build us a new house. It is impossible to live in this one. Any minute, it may fall apart. The old man went to the sea. Goldfish, goldfish, he said, stand with your tail to the sea and your head to me. The fish came stood on his head for the old man and his tail to the sea and asked, what do you want, old man? Build us a new house. My wife scolds me and does not give me any rest. I don't want to live in this old hut, she says. It may fall apart any minute. Grieve not, old man. Go home and pray to God. Everything will be done. The old man returned and on his plot stood a new oaken house, richly carved. His wife ran out to meet him. She was even angrier than before and abused him roundly. You old dog, you don't know how to take advantage of your luck. Just because we have a new house, you think you have accomplished something. Now, go back to the goldfish and say to it that I don't want to be a peasant. I want to be a governor so that law-abiding men will obey me and bow from their waist when they see me. The old man went to the sea and said in a loud voice, goldfish, goldfish, stand with your tail to the sea and your head to me. The goldfish came, 
stood on with its tail to the sea and its head to him. What do you want, old man? He asked. The old man answered, my wife gives me no peace. She has become quite foolish. She does not want to be a peasant woman. She wants to be a governor. Very well. Grieve not. Go home and pray to God. Everything will be done. The old man returned, and instead of a wooden house, there was a stone house of three stories. Servants ran about in the courtyard, and cooks bustled in the kitchen. And the old woman, dressed in rich brocade, sat on a high-backed chair and gave orders. Good day, wife, said the old man. You bore, how dare you call me, the governor, your wife? Hey there, you servants, take this peasant to the stable and whip him as hard as you can. The servants ran up seized the old man by the collar and dragged him to the stable. And there the stable boys began to thrash him with whips. They thrashed him so hard that he could barely stand on his feet. Then the old woman appointed the old man to be her janitor. She ordered a broom to be given him to sweep the yard and he had to eat and drink in the kitchen. The old man led a miserable life. All day long, he had to clean the yard. If any dirt was discovered, he was led to the stable. What a witch! thought the old man. She has found a comfortable hole and dug herself in like a sow. She does not even consider me her husband any longer. Some time passed. The old woman became weary of being governor, summoned the old man before her, and ordered, go to the goldfish, old devil, and tell him that I don't want to be a governor. I want to be a queen. The old man went to the sea and said, goldfish, goldfish, stand with your tail to the sea and your head to me. The goldfish came. What do you want, old man? He asked. My wife has become even more foolish, the old man answered. She no longer wants to be a governor. She wants to be a queen. Grieve not. Go home and pray to God. Everything will be done. The old man returned, and instead of the house, he found a lofty castle and a golden roof. Around it, centuries walked and presented arms. Behind the castle was a large garden. In front of it was a green meadow. In the meadow, troops were gathered. The old woman was dressed like a queen. She came out of the balcony with generals and boyers and began to review the troops. The drums thundered, the band played, and the soldiers cried, hurrah. After some time, the old woman became weary of being a queen. She ordered the old man to be found and brought into her presence. A clamor arose, the generals bustled about, the boyers ran everywhere. At long last, he was found in the backyard and led before the queen. Listen, you old devil, she said to him, go to the goldfish and say to him that I don't want to be a queen. I want to be the ruler of the sea so that all seas and all the fishes will obey me. The old man tried to refuse, but in vain. If you do not go, she said, your head will roll. Taking his courage in his hands, the old man went to the sea. When he came there, he said, goldfish, goldfish, stand with your tail to the sea and your head to me. The goldfish did not come. The man called a second time. Still, the goldfish did not come. He called a third time, and suddenly the sea began to roll and roar. It had been bright and clear a moment before, but now it grew quite black. The fish came to the shore. What do you want, old man? He asked. My wife has become even more foolish. She no longer wants to be a queen. She wants to be the ruler of the sea, to rule all over the waters and command all the fishes. The goldfish did not say anything to the old man, but turned around and went down to the depths of the sea. The old man returned home, and when he looked, he could not believe his eyes. The castle was gone as though it had never been there, and its place stood a small, dilapidated hut, and in the hut sat his wife in a ragged dress. They began to live as before. The old man took again to catching fish, but no matter how often he cast his net into the sea, he could never catch the goldfish again. And for the second story, you might have heard this before because I'm quite fond of reading it. It is called The Bear. There once lived an old man and his old wife, and they had no children. The old woman said to her husband, old man, go get some wood. He went and met a bear who said, Old man, let us fight. The old man took his ax and cut off one of the bear's paws. He returned home and said to his wife, old woman, cook the bear's paw. 
She removed the skin, placed it under her, and began to pluck out the fur while the paw was cooking in the stove. The bear roared and roared and, th and thought the matter over and made himself a paw of lime tree wood. He hobbled on his wooden paw to the old man's house and sang, Creek, my paw, creek, lime wood. The water sleeps and the earth sleeps. The townsmen sleep, the villagers sleep. Only one woman is awake, sitting on my skin, spinning my fur, cooking my flesh. The old man and his wife were terrified. He hid on the shelf and covered himself with a trough, and she hid on the stove and covered herself with some black shirts. The bear entered the room. From fear, the old man groaned under the trough, and the old woman coughed under the black shirts. The bear found them and ate them. The end. <laughs> oh, that's delightful. I love it. Um, just to give you guys an idea, um, Count Nikolai's adorable, beautiful, amazing, glorious wife, Countess Serena, texted me and was like, the bear! I love this story! So <laughs> I know you brought joy to some people's hearts tonight. So thank you so much for participating and giving us these delightful stories. Our next performer is Hilla Stormbringer, who I'm sure you guys know instigated an entire war this year. So I'm super happy to have her here. Hilla, if you would please take it away. I'm so totally innocent of all sorts of wrongdoing. Uh -huh. <clears throat> you know, I misunderstood um, the assignment because I was under the impression that I was supposed to be performing a piece that was a a about joy, joy adjacent. <clears throat> now, this is important because had I understood the nature of the assignment, you would be getting a song about rain or volcanoes because of course I love to cause mischief of all sorts. But as I, a sweet, innocent bard, misunderstood, uh, I'm going to perform this song. Uh, this song actually uh, was inspired by two books. Uh, one, well, a set of books, The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, um, which I mentioned because they are very SCA appropriate. They, uh, much of the SCA has its roots in these books, <clears throat> our, our prehistory, as it were. And uh, the other is a book called uh, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Uh, which is a lovely uh, fable-ish story by uh, Neil Gaiman. And the two of them just inspired this little ditty uh, called Seeking Rainbows. No Muppets or rainbows or dragons were harmed in the making of this song. Oh, the road goes on forever, I will follow if I dare. And I don't know where I'm going, and I can't say that I care. For the world is full of wonder, and the world is full of song. And most every dream I ever had will boldly lead me on. I set out one Thursday morning with ten shillings to my name. My friends asked, what are you seeking? Is it fortune? Is it fame? So I said, I'm seeking rainbows, even if the sky is blue. And I left a trail of footprints in the early morning dew. In the meadow is an ocean, doesn't seem so very wide, but I couldn't find a boat to take me to the other side. So a flock of little sparrows will be answer in a tune that a silver ship was anchored to the sickle of the moon. So I sailed across the water, it was three days, maybe four, and a marching band of foxes met me at the other shore. With a blast of mighty trumpets and the pipes grown high and proud, and they led me to a castle that was built upon a cloud. In the castle was a princess with a sword upon her knee. And she asked, please, will you take us and the dragon kill for me? But the dragon was so gentle that I couldn't strike him dead. So instead I, instead I took him with me and he followed where I led. 
And then we traveled on together over mountain, over plain. And I made a cozy tent beneath his wings when it would rain. Then the sun shone and I laughed with joy and the dragon gave a roar. For the rainbow started at our feet and led to my front door. Oh, the road goes on together, I will follow if I dare. And I don't know where I'm going, and I can't say that I care. For the world is full of wonder, and the world is full of song. And most every dream I ever had will boldly lead me on. Yay! Thank you so, so much. And I want to give you a special shout out because you have done so much for the Bardic community at large and in our kingdom. Um, not, I mean, yes, during the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, let's be honest. And um, you are very loved. I know you probably are embarrassed right now. I don't really care. Um, you are amazing. And your dragon's heart was well earned. And um, we could not do a lot of the stuff that we do without you. So thank you, Hilla, for being such a wonderful role model and supporter of the arts. <laughs> all right, all right, enough of that mushy stuff. Our next performer is Rudava. Rudava, I'm so excited that you're here. If you would please unmute yourself and take it away. Thank you, Honor, and it has been one. I was once conceived among the dancing girls of Anyala, fellow barony to Innis Fair in the kingdom of Lokak. As tonight's theme was joy, evidenced by the bars that have come before and will come after myself, but, well, I could most definitely do something that brings myself Musicians of Dance, Etuti, Kela Sentimento Joyosa, Presentando Winsa. Hero of Winsong, it is a harp that was once. In the north in the Yaldar Muir, here of Winsong, it is a harp that is now in the south in Innis Fire. We love the harp with name Winsong that was once in the north in the Yaldar Muir. We love the harp with name Winsong that is now in the south and in this fire great musician and dancer to catherine tunes that toy poem penning sweet song singing at bardic circles bringing joy great dancer and musician to catherine tunes that toy Poem penning, sweet song singing, at bardic circles bringing joy. F sharp, C sharp, sharp in lovers at variety. Morris mover playing Clayford, R of T of T. Harding horses, Aussie artists, friends, trusty bully. Spanish instrumentals too. Songs of Holy Mary, the harp went song, plucked by Catherine, may you ever play. Plucked by Catherine, the harp went song, makes me want to sway. Plucked by Catherine, the harp went song, sails the light neck here. The harp went song, plucked by Catherine, sends forth tunes most dear. We love the harp with name went song, that was once in the north in the elder mirror. We love the harp. With name one song that is now in the south in this fire. Here of one song, it is a harp that was once in the north in the elder mirror. Here of one song, it is a harp that is now in 
the south and in his fire great musician and dancer to catherine tunes that taught poem penning sweet song singing at bardic circles bringing joy great dancer and musician to catherine tunes that taught poem penning sweet song singing at bardic circles bringing joy f sharp c sharp sharp and lovers and variety morris mover playing flavored r of tea tough tea hurting horses oxyars is rentrostable spanish instrumentals to songs of holy mary plucked by catherine the harp one song may you ever play the harp one song plucked by catherine makes me want to sway the harp one song plucked by catherine sails the black night here plucked by catherine the harp one song sends forth tunes most dear Yay! Thank you, Rudaba, for joining us. I'm so glad that you were able to make it this evening for our final showcase. Yay! Our next performer is Di. Di, thank you. You joined us last minute, and I really appreciate it. So if you would please take it away. So the thing that brings me joy in the SCA is shenanigans that mean something specific to someone. Often those are one shot things, but sometimes they do last a little longer. So this one is dedicated to the recently deposed Baroness Mari and is about her and all of those that we appreciate who are like her. We're all here together to have court tonight with the crown upon the thrones and the herald in plain sight. But no one here amongst us would feel their throat go tight if it was nay for the work of the weepers. If it was nay for the weepers, oh, what would you do? You would nay show emotions if someone paid the food. You would nay have the cranky to see the evening through if it was nay for the work of the weepers there's laurels and there's pelicans and chivalry and all and masters of defense who can stab you where you fall but stoically they'd stride in court when they are called if it was nay for the work of the weepers if it was nay for the weepers oh what would you do you would nay show emotions when someone begs a boon you would nay need a hanky to see the evening through if it was nay for the work of the weepers you think that you're detached and no tears would stain your eyes but a sniffle in your ear will make the waters rise first one then another then everybody cries when they join into the work of the weepers if it was nay for the weepers oh what would you do you would nay show emotions when someone begs a boon you would and they need a hanky to see the evening through if it was nay for the work of the weepers if it was nay for the weepers so what would you do you wouldn't show emotions when someone takes a boon you wouldn't need a hanky to see the evening through if it was nay for the work of the weepers <laughs> <laughs> how completely true is that and actually that reminded me a picture was just shared recently of when my best friend eleanor von atzinger was put on vigil for pelican and it's a picture of me going like this <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Just is perfect. You're absolutely right. Thank you so much for participating in this evening and sharing your delightful song. Our next performer is someone who is so dear to me. I've never met him in person, but I can't wait until I do. Bard Juan Abbey. Please take it away. One should always be drunk. That's all that matters. So that you not feel times horrible burdens that breaks your shoulders and bows you down. You must get drunk without ceasing. But what with? With wine, with poetry, or with virtue as you choose. 
but get drunk. And at some time on the steps of a palace or in the green grass of a ditch or in the bleak solitude of your own room, you are awaking and drunkenness is already abated. Ask the wind, the wave, the star, the bird, the clock, all of which rolls, all of which soars, all of which sings, all of which speaks. Ask them what time it is in the wind. The wave, the star, the bird, the clock will reply, it is time to get drunk. So you not be the martyred slaves of time. Get drunk, get drunk, and never pause for rest with wine, with poetry, or with virtue as you choose. Good evening, my lords and ladies, and my fellow bardic performers. Tis I, Bar Swanaby. Now, you may be tempted to pronounce that one Abby, but you'd be incorrect, and you'd be missing the ever important, the ever proud whoosh. So, without further ado, I, Bard Hornaby, shall now share with you some period challenge entertainment. This may not be the entertainment you came for, but it is the entertainment you're going to get. So, without further ado, this is for all of you, for making the world a better place. Because Lord knows the world needs to be a better place right now. So this goes out to all of you. for joining us and I know it's a shame that you joined when you did but I'm glad that you're here and I can't wait to meet you in person and I'm looking forward to many more years of sharing music and joy right back at you my lady <laughs> our next performer I know many of you know is Master Olav Brendan if you would please take it away thank you very much uh, um, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Bard Wannabe at Known World Cooks and Bards, uh, the last one that was held in real life in 3D 
in, uh, in, in St. Louis, which is at the other end of the kingdom from where I am. Um, and uh, what, what a refreshing breath of fresh air that, that gentle uh, was and, and has been. Um, this is a song written by an old and dear friend of mine, uh, Mastodon Yolo Fitzowen. And actually, it's a double header. Um, because first I'm going to do the song that he wrote, and then I'm going to do the song that I wrote based on that tune inspired by him. And there's a little bit of a story that I'll append, a little bit of a coda. This is Corellius' song. Marches fair, Sauce's daughter was enamored unseemly with the fool of the Lord. Though her duke was deemed handsome, he had a soul vain and petty, and a dark mind as empty as last summer's gourd. Now the fool, he was clever, and he sang for the lady like a nightingale piping in a green forest hall. But his station was lowly, and his body was aging, and the lover was as hopeless as if he was stone. So the lady has led them, the fool and her husband, to a cool secret garden by the midsummer's moon. And she's danced them a spell there of shifting and changing and left them dumbfounded by sorcery's boon. She has left the fool crying to the gods of his fathers. She's led a duke laughing to a high chamber door. And she's kept him there softly through two days' bright dawnings while her servants all gossiped in wonder and awe. The fool died in madness, saying he was ensorcelled, and the duke only smiled him a sad secret smile. Now the duke rules his people with wit and good humor, and he sings for his lady like the nightingale song. And she's borne him five children, two sons and three daughters, and they've grown straight and handsome and sorcerous all. And they dance in the garden and sing in the moonlight like nightingales piping in green forest halls. Down in Bringuela town lived a jolly old fellow whose figure is really a comical sight. For his forehead is bald and his eyes will amaze you and his gold-covered codpiece is really quite bright. And he wears baggy pants and a ragged old tunic. His shoes give his footsies a room with a view. And he acts very silly, and he does antler dances, and answers when summoned by the name Master Moo. 
Now his real name is Yolo. Don Yolo Fitzowen. His white scarf and laurel are both well deserved. For he'll build you a crossbow like one in museums, or thrash you with rapier without reserve. He's a craftsman, composer, a fool, and a fighter, a good friend to many. He'll come when you call, and he'll dance in the garden, and sing in the moonlight, like a nightingale piping in a green forest hall. Yay, thank you so much for coming and participating with us this evening. That was a lovely song. Thank you for sharing it. Our next performer is a special guest that I put on the spot today. Um, it is the Honorable Lady Elise, and uh, she hails from Kalantir. She was actually the Kalantir General for the Bardic War, one of our allies. And I must tell you all, she was a joy to work with. So, Elise, I'm so happy that you were able to make it. If you would, please take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. You were a joy to work with it as well. The Bar Decor was so wonderful. I hope they do that again. I actually had a really hard time with this assignment of joy. I guess I'm a tr true Kalantiri born and bred because even the songs that I wrote when I was living in the Outlands all seem to center on death, doom, and gloom. Um, so even though any number of them I could look at and say, well, this song makes me happy because, yeah, but you know, death is a major theme. And you, this one, it makes me happy, yeah, but the protagonist dies at the end. And yeah, the guy dies at the end of that one, too. And that one. And, OK, well, I did find one where nobody dies. And um, this one gives me joy because... It reminds me of many of the wonderful queens that I have known, past and present, um, some of whom I was thinking of when I wrote this song, some who have come after. And it also gives me joy thinking about the way the SEA was before the pandemic came and looking forward to the way things are coming back and the way they can be again. So this is my song, Lady of the Rose. Lady of the Rose, radiant, wise, and true. Lady of the Rose, I bend my knee to you. She walks in sunlight bright, gold on her brow, a model of grace noble and proud every eye watches wherever she goes for she is our queen our rose lady of the rose radiant wise and true lady of the rose I bend my knee to you. She moves through the populace, playing her part, the patroness of every science and art. A word to an archer, a smile for a knight, she brightens our world with her light. Lady of the Rose, radiant, wise, and true. Lady of the Rose, I bend my knee to you. She sits on her throne with the king at her side, bestowing awards 
with honor and pride. But that golden crown's not as light as it seems. It carries the weight of our dreams. Lady of the Rose, gray and wise and true. Lady of the Rose, I bend my knee to you. Lady of the Rose, I bend my knee to you. Yay, wonderful. I'm so, so glad you were able to join us. That was a beautiful song. Thank you for sharing it with us. And this is it. It's um, I'm going to sing a song just because it's the last one, but I just a huge round of applause to all of our performers. You guys are amazing. You guys bring my heart joy. Um, I know you have brought joy to other people in our kingdom and outside of our kingdom for that matter, because this is virtual. So it is accessible to anyone who has internet. Um, so thank you all so very much. And um, <laughs> love you too, Bard Wannabe. <laughs> so I'm going to sing a song that brings me joy. It is in Russian. Um, it's a hymn to the Virgin Mary. It's an Orthodox hymn, and I'm Orthodox. So without further ado, here I go. apologize for the sheet music, but I don't know the Russian by heart. So you guys, uh, and also someone pointed this out and yes, definitely. Thank you to our kingdom minister of the arts and science, Sarai for doing this every single month for me. And I usually contacted her super late in the month too, to get it set up because I am kind of lame, but she's amazing. Huge. Thank you. We could not have done it. Um, Thank you guys so much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing all of your faces in person. I love you all. Farewell and good night. <laughs>